Hey, I'm Roland with Mobile Geeks, and this is our review of the LG G3. So today we take an in-depth review of the latest smartphone offering from Korean manufacturer LG. And this time around, the company has really outdone itself, devising a top smartphone that in many respects kicks the competition into the dust. Want to know how they did it? Just follow the video and you'll see what we of Mobile Geeks think of it. So we managed to get an early sample of the G3 from South Korea. So our desire to get this device was pretty big after all the leaks and all the other stuff. Uh, the device we actually acquired was the LG F400, which is in this case the Korean model for LG U+, which is LG's own carrier for uh, South Korean market. And this is a top-end model, so this guy has 3 gigs of RAM, 32 gigs of flash storage, and just as this European version, which only has 2 gigs of RAM and 16 gigs of flash storage, runs the Snapdragon 801 quad-core SoC from Qualcomm at 2.5 gigahertz, and also has the same 13 megapixel camera on the back, including the new autofocus that is laser-based now, and they both have the rear keys right here. Other than that, they both sport the first OEM's 2K screen in this case. So, so this is actually a screen resolution of 2560 by 1440 pixels on a 5.5 inch screen. So that gives you a pixel density, pixel density of 438 ppi, which is pretty much the highest level reached so far in this screen size. There's a bunch of models that actually have higher screen densities. In this case, the Samsung Galaxy S5 LTE A has to be named because that's a 5.1 inch screen on the device or 5.2 inch screen on that one, but it also sports 2560 by 1440 pixel on that Super AMOLED screen. So when you compare the LG G3 Korean model on the left and the European version on the right, there's a bunch of major differences, but they're only mainly software based. So we have a bunch of uh, bloatware apps from LG U Plus that can't be uninstalled and that are pretty annoying actually because they always show up all the time and you can't really get rid of them. So you have these weirdly named Korean services up there that are specially crafted for the Korean market. Other than that, another specialty of this device for Korea is actually they've integrated a TDMB antenna right here. So if you want to uh, draw some looks on the subway or wherever, you just take a call and pull that guy out. So that makes you look kind of cool. If you compare this to the German or European model up here, there is no antenna on the worldwide edition of the LG G3. Of course, even the LG G3 isn't without its flaws, but there's uh, the general feeling that you really have one of the top, top, top devices of this year's flagship smartphone market. And we'll talk about the problems of this device later on, which are screen-related, performance-related, but mostly it's definitely a great smartphone. With the LG G3, you're actually looking at a high-end expensive components that are inside this device that really make it stick out. The first thing that's different between the two devices is the higher memory. Um, in this case, in the Korean model, we have 3 gigs of RAM, as I mentioned, and 32 gigs of flash storage. Under the hood, you're actually looking at the Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 MSM 8974 uh, AC, in this case, having four Crate 400 cores running at 2.47 gigahertz. So this basically offers the best performance available in smartphones right now. But it's also the same chip that's on some other major smartphone or flagship smartphones from other major manufacturers, for example, the S5 or um, the HTC One, OnePlus, and a bunch of other high-end offerings. Although the LG G3 actually has a 5.5-inch screen and a higher screen resolution, it's powered pretty much by the same uh, battery that it has already been in the LG G2, so that's a 5-inch model from last year. But performance-wise, you will end up with a bit of a lower battery life on the new model. But in the end, it's always enough battery life on this guy if you're not taxing the device too much. When buying the device, you have to decide between the 3 gig model and the 2 gig model. But what it's really about in this case is the internal storage 
and the choice of 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes. If you're an avid gamer, you would probably prefer the 32 gig model because this guy offers you about uh, 22 gigabytes of internal memory that is av freely available to, you, to the user. But in this case, I can only talk about the Korean model because this has a bunch of bloatware. I would guess that the international 3 gig version has a lot more space available to the user because this newly set up 16 gigabyte model of the European or worldwide variant actually has 10.42 gigabytes of storage available. So I guess the operating system and the pre-installed apps take up only about 6 gigabytes on the international version while it is about 10 or even more gigabytes on the Korean model right here. What's also important to notice is that you have a micro SD card slot that is combined with the micro SIM card slot up here. So you can definitely extend the storage, but especially as Android KitKat 4.4 doesn't allow you to install apps on the memory card, you will have some uh, issues installing higher end games that are uh, mostly file sizes above one gigabyte so that would probably take up a lot of space on the device and you will end up with the phone being fully loaded after just a couple of games so you as a gamer I would definitely go with the 32 gig version in this case design wise this huge 5.5 inch screen on the front actually makes this uh, LG G3 a real looker it covers most of the front, so you have a screen-to-frame ratio of about 75%, which is one of the best available in the industry right now. And the way LG does that is actually they reduce the frame size in every single way possible. So you only have 2.5 millimeter wide uh, bezels on the side, and on the top you also have reduced uh, the available space or the wasted space to the minimum. On the bottom you get this white or gray depending on the model there's also a golden version uh, you get this bar down here that basically just contains the LTE antenna and that's the reason why that is there on top you have the the earpiece the camera and a bunch of other sensors um, but mostly the front is really dominated by that screen another difference between other smartphones but nowadays it's getting more and more common is that LG only allows you to use the on-screen buttons so it's not like on the OnePlus for example where you have the possibility to, to choose between on-screen buttons and hardware buttons in my opinion that is really a good way to construct a device that is fully capable of using most of the space available on the front but you also have a bunch of options to actually change around the buttons and make them disappear but that we'll talk about later on uh, the whole thing comes along in this floating curve design or flirt, floating arc design. So it's a bit rounded, it has this beautiful metallic looking back which is not really made of metal but they're using a coating made of metallic particles that is uh, applied to the back right here. The whole thing is about 8.9 millimeters thick I think and weighs in just at just 150 grams which is very light for a smartphone of this size. If you hold it in the hand, you will actually see that LG has really outdone itself in the in regards of uh, usability, because although it is a 5.5 inch screen, I can easily reach across, and it doesn't feel in any way weird. So if you want to use this device and, for example, type on the keyboard, you will actually see that this whole thing does a really, really good job of making you able to reach the other side of the screen to type stuff and have everything readily available to the user right there. Where other devices of this size have problems when you are reaching across the screen by registering touch points down here, this only reacts to your fingertips so LG has definitely taken care of that too to make it, well, not respond to any uh, fake touch points when you just reach across the screen. So that's definitely a a really really nice nicely designed smartphone that is definitely pleasing to look at you'll also get the new rear buttons right here so LG sticks to their old concept of putting the buttons on the back but they have revised the design of this so the on and off button is more easily detectable when you're reaching the back of the phone and also the volume rockers are very well clickable 
and it doesn't feel as weird and it, as it used to be on other devices. You should definitely be able to get used to this design very, very quickly. And after only a couple of hours, you always uh, reach out to the back automatically to turn off the device or uh, switch between apps. And you can also use the buttons for a bunch of other features, for example, snapping pictures or uh, controlling other features like, for example, launching their note-taking app. Talking about the materials on the device, it's actually a good choice to use plastic on this smartphone because it improves reception on the mobile networks and also the coating on the back makes the device attract really little fingerprints. In this case down here we have a bunch of prints, but in general if you're using the white or the black model you will see that the coating, which has a nice little structure to it that makes it look kind of metallic, um, doesn't allow any fingerprints to really stick it. They're super easy to rub off and you can also remove the back. So in here we have the Qi wireless charging standard so this device can per default be charged through a Qi wireless charger and they also give you access to the battery and the micro SD and SIM card slot. So most manufacturers nowadays skip this feature, but LG, just as Samsung does, is sticking to that and they've imp improved in that regard compared to the LG G2 where you couldn't remove the back. So definitely a nice improvement and also the device really stays very, very slim. What's also interesting is that when you remove the battery, you will see that the device only weighs 107 grams without the battery. So it really feels super, super light compared to other devices that is definitely well done. Um, on the quality of the materials, this does feel a lot better than the Samsung Galaxy S5, for example, where the back covers always feel kind of flimsy. This is also bendable and stuff, but it doesn't feel as if it was would break as quickly as I would imagine it breaking on the S5, and it also feels more valuable. I mean, like it's it's really a well-designed cover right here and it is super thin and it gives you the wireless charging feature too. Although the LG G3's screen has a bunch of issues regarding display brightness, it is definitely one of the best smartphone screens available right now. As I said, it has a resolution of 2560 by 1440 pixels, resulting in a pixel density of 4538 pixel per inch. That really shows because it's super crisp. It has nice viewing angles. You won't recognize any problems viewing stuff from the side as long as you're okay with it being a bit hard to read in the bright sunlight. But it's definitely all right. I mean, like in my use case, I'm out in the sun in summer in Berlin right now and I have no issues reading that screen. The colors look really nice. They're definitely popping right here. Saturation seems okay. I mean, the contrast is a bit low. I noticed that. Also, the brightness only goes up to 390 nits right here, so that's not on the same high level as a bunch of other devices. For example, the Galaxy S5, but that's actually an AMOLED panel, or the HTC One M8 that scores up to a 450 candela, I think. So that's a bit better right there. Um, but it's definitely really a nice screen. To show off the picture quality of the LG G3, LG has delivered a bunch of videos pre-installed on the device and they really go to show that if you have the right content available so that 2k content is really available to you uh, concerning movies or tv series or tv shows or whatever um, that should definitely look super crisp and really really stunning on the lg g3 i mean i'm filming in full hd right now so i don't know if it really can show you how big or how great the quality is but if you have the right content or if you're playing games that actually support this super high resolution you will definitely enjoy the sharpness of the screen there's a bunch of issues where lg tends to over sharpen the content that is not available in this super high resolution so that might um, disturb some people but i didn't personally really notice all that so i'm really really pleased with the screen quality of the g3 in this case it has a bit of a bluish tint to it it is not the highest contrast ratio because it's only one to eight but one to eight hundred and it also isn't the brightest screen at 390 lumen but it's definitely well done Another area where LG has really outdone themselves is the camera. So we're talking about a 13 megapixel sensor up here on the back. 
that is sporting optical image stabilization, which many of the flagship smartphones that are available right now don't have. But what's really, really interesting about this is this guy right there, which is the new laser autofocus. So if you look really closely when you're holding the device yourself, you'll see a tiny red light flashing in there when you are using the camera app. It doesn't really show on the video, um, so I'm not going to even try showing you that. But what it does is basically it delivers um, real-time information on the stuff that is the subject of the, um, of the picture. And it sends out those laser beams and it is an active autofocus. So as compared to most other s smartphones right now, or pretty much all other smartphones available right now, which are only using the um, image information that is available from the camera to focus, this guy sends out its laser beams and focuses r really, really quickly. So you can even focus in the dark. So when you're using this device in low light, conditions you will always be able to focus because it sends out its laser beams on the back right there that make it collect depth information and set the focus. What also is really nice about this is that the focus turns out to be really really quick when you're using this. So right now here we have this Kinderregel and I'm just going to switch back there to the Samsung tablet on, in its box right there and it should take just under three 100 milliseconds to focus. So LG actually said something about 273 milliseconds, which makes this the fastest autofocus available right now on the market. Picture quality tends to be all right in well-lit condition. It does oversaturate a bit. And as soon as it gets darker, you will always have the same issues with any smartphone cameras. So you will end up with blocky pictures. They also have a very very aggressive um, low light mode I would say where it tends to wash out pixels and in the end you'll end up with something that more looks like an oil painting than a real picture but that only shows up in low light conditions. What's ultra, also interesting is that LG has done away with most of the menu stuff that used to be in its camera app earlier on so if you press this button up here this is all of the camera UI you will end up with you just tap to focus and the laser auto focuses uh, and after that it does take a picture if you turn that back on that's all the menus you will get there's a bunch of settings down here we can set the timers and have the clap features and HDR mode and all that other stuff turned off and on you can also switch between the resolutions but there's no longer a ton of different presets that you can choose from that used to show up in the earlier LG smartphone cameras. The LG G3 only has a single speaker that is located on the bottom left of the back that isn't covered when you put the device on the table because it uses this floating arc design. It uses a 1.5 watt booster amp that should definitely be able to deliver a good sound and it really does live up to that uh, marketing key or marketing argument that they're using right there. I mean, it's you can already tell that it's kind of a big speaker back here. And if I pull out the other device and just quickly play this song from a friend of mine, you'll hear that the sound is definitely louder than a bunch of other smartphones on the market right now. And it even has a tiny bit of bass to it. Let's just listen to it for a second. This is recorded with a Zoom H4 audio recorder, so it definitely should pretty much uh, represent what I'm hearing right now in the video. So that's definitely a pretty good speaker for a smartphone, and you'll never get close to HTC's boom sound because they have front-facing speakers, but LG definitely has done a pretty good job of integrating a good speaker on the LG G3 right here. When using uh, the headset jack to actually listen to music, which is located on the bottom right here, uh, you will notice that the sound tends to be a bit clearer if you're using the right audio formats because the booster amp has some special features that make the sound really, really nice. And if you're using the quad beat 
HD Quad B2 HD whatever uh, headset that is integrated or delivered with the smartphone you will actually see that the sound is also very nice over the headphones. The performance of the LG G3 really lives up to its flagship standard. In Antutu benchmark we would score around 35,000 or 34,000 points on the 3 gig model and maybe a thousand points less on the 2 gig model back there running Antutu right now. In real life it definitely also lives up to that hype of the super high performance. You have to notice that this is a 2K screen and the pixel count goes up from 2, 000, 2 million pixels or around 2 million pixels on a full HD screen to around 3.7 million pixels on this 2K screen so you have to push almost half almost twice the amount of pixels so that definitely does impact performance a tiny bit we would notice some micro stuttering while switching through different home screens or through the app drawer right here but it definitely doesn't impact the performance that much using that super high resolution. There is one point though where the high resolution does tend to become a problem which is heat dissipation. When we tested the device and had it running through benchmarks and a bunch of other things at highest performance the uh, home button that is made of I think aluminum or some kind of alloy would get really really hot so what we measured there was actually 48 degrees dissipated through that button back here. Overall the back does tend to get a bit hot because of the many pixels that have to be moved by the Snapdragon 801 and its Adreno 330 GPU on this device. So if you are living in a very hot environment just as our guys over in Taipei do where the um, everyday temperatures are well above 30 degrees you will have the problem of the device throttling down after a while when the performance is really taxed out. So what it does is basically it slows down the CPU a bit and it lowers the screen brightness so you will have a small pop-up menu which I in Berlin actually never experienced at all and I was also using the device at the highest uh, brightness settings. So that pop-up will tell you that they're lowering the screen resolution or uh, not the screen resolution but the screen brightness and that you will not be able to use the device as it's at its highest, highest brightness to not risk an overheating. So that definitely becomes an issue. Also while pushing all those pixels and uh, using games for example we didn't have any problems playing games because the performance always was decent and well enough what we did notice though was uh, that the battery life tends to be impacted when using games at its at their highest resolution no stuttering at all but the battery performance definitely drops a bit when using this device with games a lot but that's to be expected from a high-end flagship smartphone they tend to use a lot of power on these devices and in general in everyday life you wouldn't have those problems at all because uh, the battery life tends to be pretty good. So I've been using this device um, from last night on. So if I go into the battery overview right here, you'll see that I have already been using it for 17 hours right now and it has gone down to only 60%. Right now I've been doing this video and I have already reached a pretty decent screen on time of more than an hour and it has gone down to 60% just right now. Overall the battery lifetime should definitely get you through the day on this device if you are not um, using it constantly and if you're lowering the screen brightness. Again the super high resolution does tend to uh, lower the performance of the battery a bit. In the end of the day you will end up with I would guess around 14 hours of normal usage on battery life right here. The LG GUI, which is the interface used on the smartphone on the G3, is definitely one of the smarter or more well done um, manufacturer made UIs for Android. We are based on Android 4.4.2 KitKat in this case, but LG has done a lot of things to make this 
thing work nice and feel nice it is definitely one of the more well-made manufacturer UIs so you get this smart notice stuff up here that is part of a widget and it should tell you stuff about your usage in this case it's telling me that it's gonna be a clear day without any uh, clouds up there but they also give you tips for the usage of the device and it does tend to get a bit annoying because after a couple of days it will start annoying you every like two hours there will be a notification that makes the device vibrate or play a sound and it will only tell you hey I have the smart tips right here and please use me and after a couple of days that really gets annoying but that's basically the only gripe I have about the um, LG UI because performance is pretty nice they've done a really good job of organizing the stuff in the settings menu so if I go to settings right here you can choose between this basic list that gives you a ton of options to uh, set up special things on the device but you also have the possibility to use this tabbed menu we can switch through a bunch of very well organized tabs to set up the device for after your liking what's really interesting about this is what they've done is they've integrated the option to hide the navigation buttons down here so you can have the full screen real estate available for your gaming pleasure or whatever so in this case I've set it to not display the buttons when running and to asphalt benchmarks and all pretty much every single app can be set to not display the buttons and when you enter the app actually it will make sure that it doesn't display those um, buttons anymore so if I go into Antet and Tutu you have seen that the buttons have just disappeared and if I need them again I can just pull them up and have the buttons readily available for me so that's definitely a really nice thing that a bunch of manufacturers should definitely learn from and even Google themselves should definitely adopt in my opinion what's also very nice on this is they have done another thing in the settings where you can um, decide which button combination you want on the bottom, bottom of the screen so you can move these buttons around I can just pull this over here and have the multitasking button in the middle or whatever and you can also add a bunch of other uh, of more buttons so if I want to I can have the dual window mode and the notification button readily available so if I hit this, hit this down here it always pulls up the notification menu so that's definitely a really really nicely uh, well thought out idea so you don't have to always reach up here and handle the device differently to pull down the notification bar you can also just hit that button down here and have that pull up the menu right there so that's really smart and well done LG in this case you can also set the different colors for the um, buttons on the bottom of the screen so I can switch between silver and the fade or whatever and that's definitely also a very nice idea from LG for your smartphone or for the G3 right here what LG also has done is again they have integrated their knock-on code feature so you can have these codes where you just tap a bunch of times and it will unlock the screen for example or you can just double tap to wake up and again that's really really nice the way you turn off the screen is then again you just double tap the menu bar up there and it will turn off the device so in this way you can unlock and stay safe using that knock code feature that LG is definitely pushing and they have good reason to do so. LG also has reworked the icon design on the G3 so most of the icons that are um, coming with the apps available from LG themselves is uh, using a new design where they're combining the round shapes from their LG logo with very very flat icon styles so the camera for example used to be very physical I would say and kind of looking realistic like the skeuomorphic design that has gone away now and is moved over to this more flat and stylish design that definitely also makes the device looking pretty good but you will notice that a bunch of most apps still don't use that kind of design so even Chrome 
kind of sticks out a bit, but that will probably change with the release of Android L. And hopefully this device will also be moved to that new interface. While we don't know if the GUI will stay, stick around for that because L Android is going to be looking a lot different and we'll see how LG deals with that. Overall, the interface of the LG G3 is really nicely thought through. It does tend to be a bit cluttered, but it's not as overloaded as Samsung's, for example. And performance also is pretty nice. It's not as snappy as on the HTC One M8, but it definitely does a nice job of making you really nicely able to handle this device, the LG G3. Another feature I also really like about the UI of the LG G3 is the LG keyboard because this is adaptive. So what they're doing is it learns from the way you type. So you, if you hit buttons, for example, if you have the habit of always flipping around the B and the V button down here, which I tend to do a lot on stock Android keyboards, it will learn that your intention was to actually press B instead of V and will learn that and will use that for later on for typing and will make the experience much more smooth. What's, what you also can do is you can resize the buttons depending on your liking or if you need more space, if you have bigger fingers like I do right here, you can always in the menu settings pull up the menu a bit and make it easier for you to type on bigger buttons right there. Um, another feature they have done is you have the uh, possibility to move around the cursor in the keyboard while placing your finger on the uh, space bar down here. So that makes it a lot easier to select certain parts of text or to move the cursor to a special part or point in the text when typing. Um, another thing they have done is you can they show you a preview of, of what you're typing in this bar above the keyboard. So if I go in here and I'll start typing my name, you can see that the whole thing already shows up up there and you don't have to always switch between or the, the your eyes don't have to move as far while typing. So you can more easily and quickly and type more quickly on this keyboard. So LG does really do a good job of customizing the keyboard. You also have the option to actually switch around the layout. So apart from the height settings, you can definitely, as you can see, you can move around and set the height of the keyboard after how you prefer it. You can also um, switch around the buttons on the lowest part of the keyboard. So you can switch out these symbol buttons. I had a point button just to hit the uh, full stop right there, customized to that bottom part right there. And that's really a really, really well thought out addition. So if you don't like switching your keyboard languages up here, you can always pull this out and replace it. Or if you don't want the settings to be available from there, you can also replace that with more usable or more useful options. So LG does definitely do a great job on the keyboard of the G3 and I definitely prefer this to pretty much any other keyboard I've been using so far. You can also set it up to do this swiping style stuff but that really shouldn't be necessary. If, you're, if you like that you can always use a custom keyboard but in this case I definitely would prefer the default setting from LG on the G3. So what else is there on the G3? Um, for features, there's only one thing more or one thing left that I want to talk about, which is the uh, infrared blaster up on top that does have some performance issues like just like it did on the G2 actually. So you will have some problems using that with your TV at home because it tends to be a kind of not the most pleasureful experience because it sometimes doesn't register when you're pressing buttons on the smartphone to actually change channels or switch the volume. Um, another feature that the European model doesn't have is, as I said in the beginning, this antenna on the back right here that is missing on the European model. So I was 
wishing that they would integrate a DVB-T antenna, for example, but DVB-T is going away in Germany pretty soon in like two years, and they will switch to DVB-2, and that is probably the reason why they left this out on the G3. Overall, the G3 is definitely one of the best smartphones available right now on the market. If you can live with the fact that the super high resolution does have a bunch of disadvantages for example problems with the performance where it will th throttle after using the device in a very hot environment for a while um, but that's pretty much the only thing I have to niggle about on the screen because it does have a good brightness the sharpness is unprecedented it's definitely one of the most crisp uh, screens I've ever seen on any device and it does definitely make a difference compared to full HD screens of the same size. And I would show you that if I had my OnePlus right now. But um, on that device, I can actually see single pixels. And that is definitely not happening on the G3 right here. Performance-wise, we're always in the top league on the G3. So you can play any games you like. Um, there's enough memory on here. Switching out the battery is easy. The micro SD card slot is a nice feature to have to have all your photos and videos and whatever um, on the memory card and save some space. The screen is great, the weight is nice, it does feel really nice, the ergonomics are very very well done. The UI is good looking, they have a great on-screen keyboard. Performance does mostly feel totally fine and if you are in the market for a top-end smartphone, you should definitely look at the LG G3 because this device is definitely up in the top five. If, in my opinion, it's actually the best smartphone available right now because it offers the most compact form factor. It's only a little bigger than the 5.1-inch Galaxy S5, and it's just about the same size as the HTC One I made, and it is a lot smaller than the same size or same screen size one plus one so it's about a centimeter uh, smaller than that Chinese smartphone so if you have the 500 euros that this device is actually costing right now in Europe I would definitely go with the G3 in this case if you like what we do on our channel give us a thumbs up a like on Facebook or follow us on Twitter Google Plus or wherever or subscribe to the channel and we will see you later Bye.